so I know I haven't done an update in a long time, and it's because I hadn't worked on the game in a while. But all of a sudden, I've been on a, I've been on a spree, and I've been working, working a lot on the game. Made a lot of progress, did a lot of things. I haven't moved the plot forward, but I've been fixing and neatening up a lot of stuff. Uh, and I'm really actually, not to toot my own, I'm pretty proud of some of the abilities I've come up with for us, for the characters. I wanted to focus on just making the game more fun, more playable, more interesting, especially fixing a lot of the characters. They were just kind of boring and one-dimensional, um, except for like their dialogue, their backstory. But I mean, like, in general, playing them was just like, it was just like Elsa was just a damage dealer, Ryla was just a tank, Diana was just a caster. And that's pretty much like how each one of them was. Just the same three characters over and over again, but with small differences between them. So, I wanted to fix that by making them more individual. Um, so I came up with a couple of interesting things that I would like to share. Um, these are all uh, trademark, uh, hardcore hippie, myself. Um, if you want, if you use them, you owe me a nickel. Uh, every time you, every time you use it. Um, maybe more, I don't know, some negotiation. But anyway, so I'm gonna start with Ryla because I, maybe in one of my earlier videos I was like I wanted to figure out how to do a taunt but I couldn't figure out how so let me walk you through the story how this went so I was making all the characters a little more a little more specialized giving them a little more character and I noticed when I got to Nina here and I was trying to figure out a way to make her cooler I saw this is SP parameter target rate and I was like oh okay what does that do? I have no idea. There's no description for it. If you open it up and you go to SP, it just says rate of change. You go to target rate, it says rate of change. You go here, it doesn't tell you. Like, what does target rate mean? I have no idea. So I tested it by setting it to 0% and seeing what would happen. And it turns out, if you set that to 0%, the enemy will not target this character. Not with a not with a targeted attack. If it's like a random attack, it'll work. If it's like an attack all ability, that'll still work. Uh, but if it's just like a basic attack that has to choose a target, will not select her and I was like okay cool that's pretty awesome uh, maybe what I can do is use this to you know create like a some sort of kind of a taunt ability by increasing it up to like 500 percent so I went to Ryla and I was like all right we'll give you target rate 500 percent and it, it didn't work it turns out once you get above 100 percent it makes no difference at all uh, all it really says is like what is the probability of this character being an available target so anything above a hundred percent says she's an available target. That's all it says. It doesn't make them more targetable. On the other hand, lowering it does make a difference. So, uh, so I, I was a little stuck on the whole taunt thing for a little while. So I said, I just, I just made it so everyone has a slightly different target rate. So like the, the sort of like the melee tank characters have a higher higher uh, target rate. Uh, sort of like the dodgier DPS characters slightly lower, so they get attacked a little less often. Etc. Etc. So it sort of makes it so that everyone fills their job roles a little better, and that's, that's been working really well. And I tried a couple of things to get the taunt to work, and it still just wasn't working. Trying to screw around the target rates and this, that, and the other thing. And eventually, I was brainstorming with my uh, my friend and editor uh, how to make it work, and it kind of came to me a really convoluted way to make it work. So this is how I made taunt work. So, Ryla has a skill, um, it's, it's, it's called Taunt, originally, I can't remember what I originally called it, but I kept forgetting what it was called, uh, so I kept going past it, like, where is it, I can't, I can't find it, so I just called it Taunt, because I, so I'll, always, I'll, never, I'll never see it. So what Taunt does, let me just scroll down, just, just a couple of abilities, uh, it's, um, the, it might take me a minute to find it, because I want to be replacing an old ability, uh, but basically, you cast Taunt, and it does some stuff that's weird. It doesn't seem to make any sense at first. Oh, did I go past it? No, there it is. Okay. So all Taunt does is it adds a, a, a state Taunt to all allies, which seems kind of weird. Like, well, why would you want to Taunt your allies? But it all makes sense in a minute. So it'll cast, put a state Taunt on all allies and do common event Taunt. So let's start with the state. The state of Taunt which duh, 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 duh. I feel like was this one I had to make or I think it was another one to taunt. Here we go. Uh, I changed the target rate to 0% and has a little TP regeneration because I thought that would just be nice. Um, and again, so right here, technically, 
the taunt would already sort of kind of work by making everyone's target rate 0%. Because when every character's target rate is 0%, enemies targeted attacks will default to attacking the first character in order. So whoever, whichever character's in the first player slot will be the one who's attacked by default. So if you put Ryle in the first slot, there, it works. Technically, she always gets attacked. Mission accomplished. But if she isn't, then it doesn't work. Somebody, whoever's in the first slot will be attacked instead, so it's not a genuine taunt. Uh, so I was like, all right, that's not gonna work. Uh, but what, 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 what's that common event say? A common event taunt, what's with that? What does that, what does that mean? Well, what it says is, if Ryla is affected by taunt, remove taunt. So what does this mean? Then what this means is that when Ryla uses taunt, it sets everyone's target rate to 0%, but then she removes that state from herself, which means her target rate is now 75%, which means she's the only one that could be at targeted for a targeted attack, and hence, she always gets attacked. And ta-da, the most convoluted way <laughs> to get a taunt to work in base RPG Maker that I could think of. And if we were to just test it real quick here, um, I just wanna make sure they don't get, don't get like killed or some shows just, Go with the union team here. So she'll scout. I'll just tell you guys guard, just because I want to show that it works. I can't remember if the snakes have random attacking abilities or targeted attacking abilities. Guess we'll find out. Looks like they have the right kind. As you see, yeah, Ryla's just getting her ass kicked, which is what we're, what we're looking for. Let's go two out of two. Come on. Attacked. 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 Perfect. You see, ta-da! It works! They can only, as long as the other two, the other two have taunt, boom. She can't get attacked. And they can't get attacked. Only Ryla gets, gets, gets attacked. One more time for good matter, just to, just to drive it home. How many turns it last for? I'm gonna keep going until it runs out to show that once it goes away, then the snakes will target anyone they want. I see, I also gave Ryla a default counterattack because that's supposed to be part of her style. So the idea is, attack me, she attacks you back. And it's been working out very, very well. Okay, so now the, the taunt's been removed, so we'll see what the snakes do now. Oh, look, they just, they do whatever. Haha, <laughs> look at that! And of course, they go after the healer, because, you know, fuck, fuck, fuck the healer. One last time. You see, they're still more likely to attack Ryland. You can see, look, and then oh, we'll, put, we'll put it back on. I need a sound effect and I need to change the animation, but getting it to function was really the only thing I was concerned about. Is it done? They all attack her. Yay! So I was super proud of that. I thanks to my, my friend Brandon for listening to me rant. If it wasn't for that, I probably would have been stuck on this for a lot longer. Okay, that's right all set. After that, I got really ambitious and decided I wanted to work on Elsa next because she was just kind of a dull damage dealer. She didn't really do anything cool. So I was thinking, like, all right, what could she do to make herself a little... So I see it. I added some things. So, like, uh, she, now she has a natural crit rate. She, by default, just attacks twice. Um, well, actually, it's not... When, when she does a normal attack, she attacks twice. So that makes her a very good damage dealer. She does her job very well now. Um, but I still wanted something to make her stand out. Give her something... Give her something special. So, it took a little while. <laughs> it took a, a little, little while. Um, but eventually, I, I got it. Uh, so we have an alter element over here. So now what El Elsa can do is she can, she can change the elemental state of her basic attacks to exploit elemental weaknesses of the enemies. Uh, and again, this one was... Um, it wasn't hard to implement. Uh, it just took a little time because it's it's again I'm not sure if I'm doing this in 
the easy way or not. Um, so again, so let's just let's just walk through it. This one should be all the way near the bottom. Uh, da, 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 alter element. So all alter element does is she uses it, costs magic, blah 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 blah. Uh, all it does is activate common event, change element. So what does change element do? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, again, this wasn't bad to do. It just it it was it was a lot of writing, as you can see. It was a, a good amount of writing. Not too much, but it, so first off, what it does when it activates is it makes sure it, it removes these different elemental states: fire state, water state, ice state. It just gets rid of them. Then it opens up um, a dialog box telling you to choose your element. Then you choose your element. When you choose the element, it then adds the elemental state to your basic attack. So water state, wind state. But obviously, then I do all that. Blah blah. blah. And then after that, I made sure she she basically does a bonus to that. I've been adding this a lot to a lot of my characters so that when they use an ability that's kind of like meant to set them up, they'll still get an attack that turn. So you're not just like basically throwing your turn away completely. At least it doesn't feel like it. Because sometimes I just feel like it's like why would I do this when I can just keep attacking? Now it's like oh why not do this and then get an attack? Woohoo! So anyways, the change state part. So not only do I have to do all the like. This brief little dialogue box with choices and this that, and the other thing. I also had to make the states to go with it. So, and each state is pretty simple. It just adds an elemental effect to your basic attack. So we see attack element thunder. So when you do this, now thunder is added to the her basic attack. Uh, and again, it, it it works very well. So it's just I, I the only thing that sucks. I have to go through and change all the enemies to have some kind of elemental weakness. Uh, right now, the only one that has an elemental weakness is the boss, who has a weakness to thunder. Well, the test boss, anyways. With uh, boss one. So he has a weakness to thunder. Let's just, uh, Riley, you just do your job. You you get punched a lot. Uh, let's just do a basic attack to see how much damage it does. Now remember that how much how many tech points they have will increase their damage. So, it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio, one damage for every tech point. Uh, just do this, because this guy sometimes can hit pretty hard. So we're doing very little damage, 10 and 13. And yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's hitting pretty hard, right? <laughs> he's hitting really hard right now. Oh my god, he must have started off with a random number of tech points, which is something I still haven't been able to fix. Um, here, let's do... Uh, Okay, so I'm going to lower his defense. His, his defense is cranked. Because the idea is that he's a big armor thing. He has high defense. So Whack will get rid of his defense. We'll do another basic attack. And uh, just... Uh, you just... Yeah, just do that for now. Let's just... Okay, so now his defense is down. Let's we'll see how much damage he does. That was a crit. Those are both crits. Okay, so... 250 damage on a crit. Is this gonna kill Ryla? I'm gonna be very upset. Okay. Uh, Ryla, you should. Yeah, just, just discard for now. Okay. Uh, can we get a non critical hit so I can see what the base damage is? Granted, also, Elsa's tech points are now through the roof. So her base damage right now is 110 and climbing with all the tech points she's gaining. Okay, just guard. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna then we're gonna alter her element to thunder because I already know that's his weakness. Uh, da -da -da. And yeah, just 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 keep spam spamming rally for now. So right now, so. She casts it, she's going to ask me to choose an element, I'm going to choose Thunder, she'll then do a bonus attack right afterwards, which, if it had no effect, she would be doing about 120, 130 damage with a non-crit right now, and, well, let's see, oh, geez, look at that, not crits, but, like, a 50% increase, wild, so I could, and then you can change that as much as you want, which is fun, um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah, I'm really proud of that. So now she has something else to help ramp up her damage, which is, I think, is really cool. And, uh, 
yeah, well, we, no, we, again, it, and then we can just be changed. So if I'm like, all right, I'm gonna change to something else because I'm stupid, but whatever. It's just. I'm gonna add some effects and stuff. So let's just say fire. And see what happens. That was a crit. That wasn't a crit. You see the damage went down up by about 50-ish points because I was using the wrong element. So yeah, so now she can change her elements to match her whatever that to exploit the weakness and make her an even better damage dealer. Uh, the next step I want to do is make it so uh, Diana can I basically effectively identify the enemy and, and tell you what what their weakness is. Uh, that's something I'm going to do tomorrow. It's getting too late to do that. Um, so yeah, so that, that really it, it makes Elsa a much more interesting damage dealer to use now, which is what I was looking for. So a lot, lot more, lot more fun now. And next, I then went to. Uh, well, I did do my. Next, I wanted to apply the same thing to Mina, because uh, plot-wise, Mina is. She, I mean, she's very. She's 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 really small. Um, so, so she, you know, when she started like working for the church, and after she after she she met Nina, uh, she would come back a little beat up. So Nina recommended her using like tranquilizers and poisons, nothing harmful, but just something to give her an edge in combat. And so that's sort of her shtick, is that she uses mostly non-lethal poisons uh, to, again, just level the playing field, because she's like, she's like barely five feet tall, if that, and she weighs like 70 pounds soaking wet. So she needs a little something. So I wanted to apply the same thing to her, giving her like options that you could use, but making it slightly different. So you see how she has apply poison. So it's, again, it works very much, uh, the, very similarly to Elsa's um, uh, element change, except it's going to apply uh, different kinds of poisons. And so obviously it does pretty much all the same stuff for the most part. It, uh, which it does it's just going to be, it's going to call an event, make sure to get rid of the other poisons, and then going to apply a poison state to the enemy. I think. Well, it adds it to her basic attack, and then she does a bonus attack. So each one of these sort of does something to like some sort of damage over time. So you have like uh, damage over time, magic points over time, tech points over time, or just sort of a general weaken all their stats kind of a thing. Which because it's a different a different state than a lot of other sort of like general weaken things, it can be stacked with them. So you can start stacking a whole bunch of these and really like make the enemy really weaken the enemies. Um, so let's uh, let's give that let's give that a test run here. Uh, again, this guy can just be such an asshole sometimes. But let's just let's just go. Let's just do this. No, nope, not Isa. I love her, but not 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 Isa right now. Oh, I changed Aura too, actually, quite a lot. So might as well show off Aura. Might as well explain Aura as well while I'm here. Uh, and so Aura again. I the whole thing with her was uh, changing changing between stances, which you're not gonna be able to see here. Uh, probably gonna just go to classes. Okay. Was changing stances, which again you also can't see here. Uh, well, look, trust me, it's just what she does. Uh, so I have to go to one of her skills. So whenever she uses a skill, she changes stances, like um, I've said in a previous video. So for instance, if she does Crescent Slash, right? Uh, it does a bunch of stuff, damage, blah, blah, but it creates common event caster stance, which will uh, remove striker stance from her if, if she has it and then give her caster stance and what, what caster stance does so what her stances do uh, which no no they were goddamn uh, it's actually it's still called swordsman stance but it's fine so you see what swordsman when she's in swordsman so she'll cast a spell when she casts a spell she answers swordsman stance when she ca when she uses a special special attack she then answers caster stance well you're in cat while well, you're in swordsman stance you can't cast magic so you seal type magic when you're in caster stance you can't use specials so you're kind of stuck in there but then you get a bonus to whatever stance you're in so you got so caster stance bonus magic attack bonus magic defense and now I added it I added in that she gets a bonus attack um, in both cases so while she's in a stance she effectively attacks twice but she has to keep bouncing back and forth between the two, or you could just do get get into a stance and spam normal attacks. That's totally fine. That's a thing you can do. Um, that's the, really the biggest change. Give it, give her the two attacks. I, before I I put it on I put it on not bloodlust, but I put it on her uh, uh, one of her other spell there, uh, blood power, 
to give her the double attacks, and I, I kind of just decided I didn't like that, <laughs> so I just I attached to the stances, and I think it's it's been working out a lot better. I haven't really worked on Nina yet. I moved some abilities around a little bit, but uh, she's coming up on the list. I just I, got, I have a lot of I got, oh, she's almost there. I'm I'm almost done tweaking each character. So oh, I also added uh, throw dagger because I wanted to experiment with. So here, let me, uh, we added it. So in order to throw a dagger, she has to have a dagger. So I'm gonna give her some daggers so I can throw them. Okay. If you don't, if you don't, you have to have a dagger equipped to use it. And if whenever you throw a dagger, the, yeah, you lose a dagger. It'll start with daggers that are uh, in your inventory, but eventually it will use daggers that are equipped. But when you're running a test, you don't have any weapons in your inventory uh, besides the ones that are equipped, so it doesn't really work. So anyways, here we go, we got this, we'll do blood power right off the bat. You see, I got basic poison, uh, but I can apply poisons right away. So, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna apply a poison. Uh, we can't do any specials yet. Oh yeah, I had to recuperate over here. Um, yeah, let's just, just do that. Yeah, just cause it just gives sort of a general regen for everything. So she'll do that, it'll ask me which poison I want. Let's start off with... Might as well just get the HP poison out of the way. She'll immediately attack. Oh yeah, I also made so... Mina now marks the... Oh my god, why? <laughs> uh, so yeah, a bit of a problem. I haven't quite fixed yet. Um, I still gotta figure this out. So the enemies are still just starting with a random amount of tech points. <laughs> I don't know how to stop that from happening. I've tried a bunch of different things. Nothing has worked. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Might as well do that too. Okay, so we applied an HP poison, so you see it's gonna take damage over time. Um, let's uh. Do this again. This time, let's do tech points. There. Since obviously you're probably gonna kill everyone with this spell. Yeah, with fucking insane amount of damage. Oh my god! Stop! Ah! Oh! Uh, well, you see, the ability works. Um, you get a small problem that the uh, the guy's just starting off with anywhere between like zero and fifty tech points, which means they get a bonus zero to fifty damage when I want the boss to be averaging like 30-ish damage a hit. So from going from like 30 damage hit to 80 damage a hit or more, it kind of screws things up. Uh, now she was level one, that probably also didn't help anything. So this will probably help a lot. But I mean, even Aura was level seven, she got just murdered. Okay, let's try this again. It, uh... Oh yeah, that yeah, makes a big difference. Look at that! No, oh, she got all sorts. Look at flirt. Now. I'm gonna try something a little different. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do, we're gonna, we hit the stats. This will just generally weaken the boss, and he's still just doing an abs way more damage than he's supposed to be doing. But now he's also now he's doubly. His stats have been hit twice, so he's he's losing. I'm not exactly sure how the math works, but it should be he's losing. It's, his stats are set to 66% of whatever they normally are, but then 66% of that again. So he should be pretty softened up. Um, okay, let's see the stats thing. You know what? Let's, uh, just because I'm paranoid of it now, let's, uh, let's see. I put prepare on Nina, because I said she's supposed to be like the medic. I figure she's probably the one that has like all the supplies in her backpack. Okay, so let's go with, you because know, I'm paired with it now, let's, let's make sure you don't have any tech points. Oh wow, it's a good crit. Two good crits, nice. Uh, one thing about Aura, um, since after she does like a magic attack, so right now I can do a magic attack and I could technically queue up two magic attacks. But uh, once she does the first one, she'll change stances, and then her magic will be sealed. So then she won't execute the second attack. Um, so you could you could you know kind of fix that by just making sure to attack first and then using magic. But 
Uh, I'm not sure if I even want to bother trying to fix it. I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay, so now she did that, so we can do some recuperate, and you know what, we can. Eh, why not? We'll just do a little uh, recuperate. Nice. Actually, his stats are hurting. His tech points have been drained, and now he's ve now he's now he's manageable. Now we'll just get yeah, a killing blow here. So I don't think it's gonna do a lot of damage. So we'll just do cleave, and I'll do a normal attack. And just to show you, throw dagger. We'll just do that, and that's about it. And we'll make everything crit too, because why? You know what? Just because, and you, you, you get two actions too. Everyone gets two actions. It's a lot more fun that way. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, the order of that was all fucked up. Now you see that... But now the boss has all these debuffs on him, lowering his stats, because I've now dr probably drained all of its tech points. It's now doing absolute base damage. It's now very manageable. And let's just see if we can just end this. <laughs> it just it doesn't work. I gotta change that. I forgot that I... I uh, yeah, that's... Actually, I'm not really 100% sure why. It used to go first. Yeah, just just punch him. I think he's almost dead. The steel mechanic still kind of works. There we go. Much better. So this part is starting to feel pretty good again. Still got to work on Nina a little bit. Um, I think once I add more items that can actually be she can actually use, uh, I think she'll be a lot more versatile. But I just, ha get, ha just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, then last but not least, uh, what I just did today, just make sure to forget anybody. I moved some things around, but I didn't, like I didn't really change Isa. I didn't really change Gaiga in any like significant way. But Milena, I want to do something else because she again, she was she was good. She did her job, but again, didn't really stand out. And I was just thinking the other day, she's supposed to be like a shaman, talk to spirits. What if she could summon a spirit, like? fight by your side so I worked on that and ta-da I was able to get it get that working in an hour and a half with only one thing that was a little bit wrong with it but it still worked um, so starting with the, uh, the I see we have spirit as a class we have spirit as an actor because that's just how I made it work um, so if we go to uh, Milena I see you got all the things there now we have summon spirit in there so what does summon spirit do let's see here well, the skill, which is going near the bottom. Again, I've been doing this a lot, so it just does common event summon spirit. Okay, so what is the common event? Summon spirit, man! Okay, so this was a little bit of a brain tease. I had to think through this pretty thoroughly before really like executing the plan. Because um, there are a lot of issues that come up when adding somebody to the party temporarily. So, the common event summon spirit is if spirit is in the party, just exit. Just stop immediately, don't even do anything. And this prevents, uh, you obviously, just being able to summon spirit, summon spirit, and just like filling up all the party slots with spirits to the point where you could probably just crash the game. Um, so this way it's like, if you have a spirit already, get fucked, you don't, you don't get another spirit. Otherwise, add spirit, an initialized version of the spirit, and then add state fade out, which... Uh, you think, uh, which obviously means that you know this is uh, it's on a timer because putting it on a timer turned out to be a little, little complicated. You also notice that there's a right in the sun period. You have you know we have a fading with another if then. So if spirit is affected by fade out, uh, just don't do anything. Yeah, uh, just just don't do anything. Otherwise, remove spirit from the party. 
Ah, so because the idea the game has to check to see. I can't. The only timer that exists is an actual like time timer based on minutes and seconds. And it's like, okay, I could have it last like a minute, but so you can just play really fast to get the best out of them. But I wanted to be I wanted to be set to a number of turns or actions, and it took me a while to noodle my brain around it, but I figured it out. So we, when you summon spirit, you put the state fade out on it too. That just happens, it's just there. Okay, a fade out. Doesn't really do anything, it just lasts three turns. And this is my timer. So while this is on, the common event fade out will not get rid of spirit. Now, the next thing is gonna be the fade checks. So Fade check is a skill. Uh, you notice that it is it actually does damage, which is kind of weird. It's damage variance has common event fading. Okay, so there's our there's our fade check right there in this attack. Now this attack, I, ha I wound up having to put on a weapon, so I have a weapon just called fade check, which just effectively overwrites the normal attack as fade check. So fade check just is a normal attack but with the added caveat of having that fade check common event going off every time it attacks. So, uh, it's a whip. I don't know, I just thought, I just thought it would be funny. Uh, so then on spirit, we have weapon, just comes with the fade check right there, boom. Um, it, also has, it can equip that. It also has a special flag auto battle, so this way it will only ever attack, it will only ever do a normal attack because that's all it can do. It's all Spirit can do because I had to make a special class. It's just Spirit where, like, literally, that's all it does. It can just attack things. Um, so this way, the Spirit will, uh, every turn, it'll just do a basic attack, which activates the Fade check to say, hey, does the Spirit have Fade? If it has Fade, don't do anything. Once the Spirit doesn't have Fade, then remove Spirit from the party. This basically makes it so the, the fade acts as a timer. And, because I couldn't figure out how to do it any other way. And it worked. I was happy um, until like the, originally I had just sets that the uh, spirit had the same abilities as Ryla. And then for some reason it was using all of like Ryla's abilities, even though it shouldn't have been able to. I, I don't know how that works. So whenever I fix that. Um, God, I really don't. I just, just, just fight against snakes. I just, I got, I got to figure out other things too. So, da da da, da Isa. So level seven is just a nice, nice spot to test these things at. And there's still some things I'm, I got to work on here. So like, I'll, uh, Ray, I'll, I'll, I'll ask my own questions when I'm done. But for now, it's just, it's just guard, guard, magic, summon spirit. And ta-da, look, Spirit is in the party. So if we just sit here and guard, eventually Spirit is going to be forced to do a basic attack. Every time he attacks, it's going to check and say, does Spirit have fade? If yes, leave him alone. If no, remove, remove Spirit. So we'll just keep doing this until fade goes away and then see what happens when the next time it does the basic attack. So fade is gone. So now next time spirit attacks, it should be removed from the party. Attacks and poof, gone. Ha ha, ta-da! And of course, just to double check, like, alright, is can I re-summon it and still and still function like it's supposed to? Look at that. Yeah, nice. There were some other caveats, obviously, after thinking about it. Um, I'm sure anyone who was listening was like, well, oh, that's not going to work because what happens when like the battle ends um, and, it, and the spirit hasn't faded out? Don't worry, I thought of that. Um, I didn't change anything, so. Oops. So obviously, what I had to do was a bit, a bit tedious. I didn't do it here yet, but I'm gonna have to do it to every single battle from now on. 
Uh, I'm gonna have to make it so that when the at the end of the battle, it checks to see if there's a spirit in your party, and then remove it. So let's go to where obviously this the barbarians start here. So we'll just so I started here. I just made it so these enemies have that extra little bit. So you see battle processing. If you win, it's do, it's gonna do a spirit check. So I just made that a common event. All the spirit check says is, um, do you have spirit in your party? If yes, remove. <laughs> like that's it. Uh, it's just faster uh, to just make it a common event than it was to do it this way where. I have to make, make a conditional branch, and then under that conditional branch, have a check for the spirit, and then have a remove. It just saved me a step, basically. Um, so now, ever, whether you win or lose, it's going to check and be like, "Do you have spirit in your party? If yes, get out." <laughs> so, solve that problem. But now I got to do that to every single mob. And if I ever want to do any other kind of summon, it would also have to be some kind of a check at the end to ensure that uh, there is no. You're not just like gaining mysterious party members that shouldn't be there. Um, there is one issue I haven't tried yet, and I might as well just give that a go now it's just to see what happens. Is if you have already have four members in your party, what happens when you summon spirit? I imagine spirit's just going to be added like to the background, like just going to be in your party, but not like in the fight. Uh, which kind of slightly undermines the. You in here. Which kind of undermines the whole point of even having the ability, because if you have a four-man party, what's the point of having even summoning a spirit? Yeah, we see it doesn't. So I'm assuming in the party somewhere, in the background, it there is now a spirit. Um, so again, that does kind of undermine the whole point of having it, especially when the characters, it, you're going to be able to make four man, four man, par, uh, four player parties um, within an hour or so of gameplay to, if you just, if you just did one storyline. Um, so it's not like it's going to be that useful. Uh, so it's just something that was interesting to experiment with. It was nice to get it to work in a relatively short period of time. Um, I could maybe have it so that it could replace a member of the party, but then like, I'm not sure how that would work, but anyways, that's it. I just wanted to show that stuff off. I've been doing a lot of other things too, fixing a lot of enemy behaviors and designs and uh, just tweaking some things, uh, tweaking equipment, adding uh, other things to like the map, uh, fixing fixing Casby at night and getting that set up for the next so the next for the next part of the story. Um uh, that's yeah, okay, that yeah, that's about that's about it. Um, but yeah, just trying to make the combat more entertaining because I found like that was a part that was not all that much fun. It was okay, but the, like some a lot of, some characters were fun and the other characters were really boring. And I wanted to make it so that all the characters felt fun. Uh, maybe then I could actually just sort of like increase the difficulty of the enemies a little bit. But uh, we'll see about that. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. I'll just a little little update. Um, I feel like there's something else I wanted to say, but yeah, that's it. Um, and if anyone watches this and you have uh, any questions about how to like script something, uh, maybe it, maybe I can help. I'm not like an expert or anything, but you know. So far, I can I can brute for I can brute force anything to work. Let me tell you. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I think this video is long enough. See ya.